you look at what's going on in the world of data right now, you turn on the television and you see that there's a plane crash, and you don't see, oh, we don't know what to do, there's a plane crash. You see all of this information that doesn't agree with itself. Our problem isn't that we don't have enough information, our problem is we're swimming in it, right? Mm -hmm. So organizations are throwing away more data than they're looking at right now, which is really alarming. Mm -hmm. So when you think about data-driven marketing, nobody wants more contact in their life right now. They want more relevant contact. It's got to be more about the connections that can be made and the sort of persistence of those connections as you change your identity from one place to another or from one context to another. If you want to market in a space that's that chaotic and that dynamic, you can't use the same techniques that you've been using all along. You've got to get a lot smarter about how you use that information. A lot faster, a lot more, a lot more connected, a lot more sort of um, a lot more institutional memory about what you've done before and what the party to whom you think you're speaking has done to get you to be in contact with them, those kinds of things. So you study those, like, those connections are where you live, right? Yeah, that's, absolutely. That's, that's what you look at all the time, you and the rest of the team here. That's what you guys look at all the time. You know, are the connections just getting that many, there's that many more of them? Or are they getting more complicated? Like, what's that, what's the world of that connection like? you know, for you guys. So all of the above, there's more of them and they're more complex. What more and more we need to realize, it's like playing chess. You don't think about every conceivable move and every counter move to every move and every counter move to those counter moves because the, the size of that problem overwhelms the space very quickly. We have to be very proscriptive. We have to be very clear about what we're not looking at and by inference what we are looking at. We use different techniques for going into connected space and sending agents into that space and giving them specific instructions, what to do if they encounter each other, what to do if a certain amount of time has gone by, things like that. And then based on the collective experience of those algorithmic agents, we can make decisions on what we want to do with that connected space, as an example. Really exciting stuff, but kind of a little bit science fiction. So how, are, how is this going to play yeah. out? You know, it's not something you're going to go buy at, at Walmart tomorrow. But, I, you know, I do think semantic disambiguation, you know, figuring out the, the sentiment behind complex, unconnected data is, is definitely a big part of where we're going. Semantic disambiguation. Making sense out of chaos. Making, making disambiguating, caking, making sense out of something that's ambiguous. Do you think marketers have traditionally laid awake at night thinking about semantic disambiguation or do they, in some, maybe not in that context, in that phrase, but have if they, they have, I'd like to chat with them. But <laughs> no, I, I think probably, you know, it's, it's the, the person who doesn't really have a name for the problem that they're living in. We all live in that sort of space of, you think about what happens when you turn on your computer in the morning. There's all these things competing for your attention. And while you're trying to figure out, separate the important from the urgent, from the, you know, the mundane, 12 things want to update themselves and, and a ask you questions and there's instant messaging and there's, well, that's happening times, you know, several orders of magnitude in the connected data space, right? So if, if an organization is just using these sort of linear techniques that we've used in the, in the past, find new prospect, market to new prospect, measure responsive market, adjust marketing approach, you know, and, and you know, lather, rinse, repeat. That's not going to work in this space because the space is changing while you're doing all that. And it's changing so dramatically that the prediction of the output to the input will no longer be relevant. You can't do it in a linear fashion anymore. So yeah, I do think they're, they're thinking about it. They're just not calling it that. So if that's not that traditional linear uh, way of going about it that you just described isn't going to work, um, you know, what will? Well, you know, in, in our space, in the data science world, we have lots of different approaches that are nonlinear. So there's, there's quantum approaches, which are on the horizon, not this year, but mm -hmm. coming to a theater near you soon. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, there's lots of what, what's called non-deterministic approaches, approaches that kind of learn as they're moving forward. It's what you do in your day. As you do something, you learn from that experience and you adjust what you intend to do next based on what you thought you were going to do and what you've learned. Mm -hmm. And those techniques, those learning techniques are becoming more and more important. The things that you do right now already learn. When you go into a search engine or you use a device or an app, these things have learned a lot about you and inferred a lot about you and they continue to do that. So you misspell something a few times 
and say, no, that's the correct spelling. And pretty soon it doesn't show up as a misspelled word. And well, something happened, right? You didn't tell it to happen. So those types of techniques are becoming far more ubiquitous in our life. We just don't realize it. They're so, definitely out there. So um, what are you fired up about? Like, what's exciting to you as you look ahead? I mean, this is the Wild West. We are at a point of inflection right now. We are drowning in information. We don't know what to do with it. You don't have to outrun the bear. You have to outrun the other campers. We've got to figure out what to do to be relevant to our customers, to help them solve real problems that they have. And at the same time, we have to learn all these new techniques to do it in a different way, way faster than we've ever had to learn before. Mm -hmm. So we're either going to die on this, on this mission yeah. or we're going to evolve into some new kind of thing. You know, we're going to learn to deal with information in a totally different way or we're going to die trying. Very exciting time. I mean, you, you're really much more in control of our destiny now than we were when we were trying to figure out how to put a, mm -hmm. you know, size 10 head into a size 8 hat. You know, there's not enough memory. The hard drive is too small. No, eh, nobody, nobody even knows how big the hard drive is anymore. It doesn't right. really matter. You got the cloud, right? I don't know uh, outside of this building uh, if you have marketer friends. Mm -hmm. One or two. What do you tell them about, you know, what they should be excited about? The opportunity space is enormous compared to the problem space, if you will, right. right? You know, before we had some of the challenges that I'm talking about right now, mm -hmm. we still had some of these same sort of discussions, but we didn't have the right words to put on them. And then we certainly didn't have the capability to go address them. Mm -hmm. And even if we did, the data wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Now the data's there, the technology is close enough, right? That the shortage is not in the, in the the chips, mm -hmm. right? Nobody cares how fast, right? everybody thinks their computer's too slow. It'll always be too slow, right? right. But it's really that the problems are in, in how do you ask the right question? How do you understand what right. you want to do next? You know, we're, we're going out and we're doing this campaign. Why are you doing this campaign? Well, because we need to, and we haven't actually thought that through. Right? Yeah. Right, so stop, back up. You know, what's the problem you're trying to solve? That's a new skill. Yeah. And, and it's been done in science for years. I mean, this, the scientific method is all about asking the research question first, understanding what's been done before, figuring out what you're going to do, deciding that that's the best thing to do, then go collect your data. Well, we're starting to behave that, we call that data science now, right? right. We just do it with data. And, and we do it with marketing data, we do it with, say, with all kinds of data. Yeah, that's great. That really is interesting when you think about, you know, asking you know, this sounds silly, but asking your data the right question, yeah. right? And as, as the starting point of all of that. Just imagine you have all the data you could need. It's not true, but it's close enough in mm -hmm. almost all cases. 80% of the data that we're creating or more is unstructured, which means we don't really know what to do with it. We're just faking it, mm -hmm. right? Well, okay, imagine you had a, a recording of the sound of all the people in a convention. Well, there's nothing I can do with that. Well, slow down. You know. Could I build some kind of an algorithm to estimate the, the level of excitement in the crowd as things are going on? Yeah, probably could do that. Could I do something to figure out the ratio of male to female voices or young to old voices? Yeah, I could probably do that. Could I do something to figure out whether they're likely to be speaking English or not? Yeah, I could probably do that. All of a sudden, that thing that seems unreachable and unusable starts to get pretty reachable and usable. So if you think about the data that we have as an enterprise that we're not using for marketing purposes, it's not going to be the recording of the sound in a room, but it might be the, the collected phone calls from all the people that called in to complain about stuff. Mm -hmm. Or it might be all of the information that we got from all our competitors about what they say about us. Or it might be the, what's in the, in the social media space that, that we think might be connected to the topic that we're talking about. How do you connect all that? And how do you figure out what's happening to the middle? Mm -hmm. And how do you figure out what's happening to the edges? Mm -hmm. We're just beginning to ask questions like that right now. How could you not be excited about that? <laughs>